Hi, it's Ken Hadrick, Dean of the Pie Academy, and I don't care whether you're a spring chicken or a mature hen or a rooster in your prime, I have got a chicken pot pie recipe that's going to make you cluck for joy. So don't go away, it's coming right up. So no doubt you've heard me mention a few times that I've been working on a new cookbook. Not a pie cookbook this time, but a comfort foods cookbook. It's being published this fall by my good friends at the Old Farmer's Almanac. It's packed with something like 200 recipes, and I'm talking recipes that'll make you swoon. And this creamy chicken parmesan pot pie is one of the real treasures. And here's the thing, anybody can make this dish, and it's an absolute pleasure to put together. When your family and friends try this, I swear they're gonna think you're a cooking goddess or, or god or whatever. Now, you probably know me well enough to know that I'm a bit of a purist in the kitchen, but I don't mind incorporating a few convenience items to streamline this dish. I'll use leftover vegetables for the filling if I have some in the fridge, or I'll pop open a can of good green beans or even use frozen vegetables. As for the chicken, you can cook it up fresh if you like, I do all the time, but I think it's hard to beat the quality and the price of the rotisserie chickens that you're gonna find at Sam's Club. That's often what I'll opt for. One place where I don't cheat in this recipe is the Parmesan cheese. I want the real thing. So I'll go to the bank and get a line of credit, then head to the supermarket and buy a little block of the genuine Parmesan cheese to use in the filling. I think it's worth a few extra bucks in this case. Now when you think about it, chicken pot pie is really nothing more than an enhanced white sauce with chicken and vegetables baked up in a crust, right? So we'll start out with sautéed onions and celery. We'll add a little flour for thickening, and then we'll cook that whole thing for a minute or two. Then we'll add our half and half and our chicken stock. Let the sauce thicken up a bit, then toss in your vegetables, the chicken, and the seasonings. I like dried thyme and sage here. Our secret ingredient, the Parmesan cheese, also goes in now. Now, let's talk about our assembly options. Naturally, you can do this as just one bigger dish with just a top crust or a top and a bottom crust, but to really impress people, I think it's really nice to do it in these individual pie dishes. I've actually had very good luck with these disposable aluminum uh, pie pans. They're perfect for an informal setting or a tailgate party. Usually, though, you're going to want something a little fancier, like one of these mini pie pans or casseroles. You want to choose dishes that are about four and a half to five inches across and about one and a quarter to one and a half inches deep. Now it's up to you whether you want to go with a top and a bottom crust or just a top, which is the way many people do it. If you do use a bottom crust, I suggest rolling it on the little on the thin side and make it about two and a half to three inches larger than your pan's diameter. It should just hang over the edge when you put it in the pan. Fill your shell, moisten the edge, and then attach your top pastry. Then you can either roll and flute your edge like you would on a big sweet pie, or just trim it and crimp the edge with a fork. When I use a dish that's tricky to line with pastry, like these Le Creuset custard cups or whatever they are, I'll typically just use a top crust and I'll tuck the extra dough down the sides. And that's about the long and short of it. I expect to hear you clucking soon. You'll find all the details in the recipe below and I really do hope you'll give this one a try. It's simple, it's fun to make, and if you like what you see, please pass this link along to a cooking friend who might like this recipe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.